Hey guys, thank you so much for joining us on Getting Real with Thomas Cox. Today's guest is BJ Ellis. BJ is the CEO of Yellowhammer. If you don't know who Yellowhammer or what Yellowhammer is, stay tuned and find out. Unbelievably fun episode today, but also very, very informative. Uh, it goes from the family stuff to the business stuff. Guy was in college coaching for a little while, so it's really, really cool. So join us, hope you enjoy it. It was so much fun talking to BJ today. So many lessons we can learn and pull from this, so hope you enjoy. So give me a little bit of your background as far as just growing up, where you grew up, and what was kind of a big deal for you? Yeah, up. sure, I lived in Crestview, Florida uh, most of my life. I uh, went to Okaloosa Walton to play basketball my freshman year. From the beach? Yeah, from the beach. Um, found out that that they were one of the, the best JUCO teams in the country, which was great during the recruitment process. Absolutely. <laughs> when I get there, not so great. Um, I transferred to Enterprise Ozark where I could get a little get a little more shots up. So um, you so you were at the beach, and then you go from the beach to Enterprise. Yeah. So if, so for all our people watching or listening to this right now, what they need to do is they need to Google both places and know that you went from the beach to the Bow Weevil capital of America. Yeah. I'm surprised yeah, you know hey, about I'm an Alabama guy. So. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Not many people know that. They have a statue of a bow wheel. That's unbelievable. No question. So went there, uh, two totally different places, right. as you know. Yeah. Um, won a state championship, which awesome. was amazing. Yeah. Got, got to play with my best friend in room in college. Had okay. great experiences. Then I went to University of West Florida, played back to the beach. Yep. Can't uh, get away from it. Played there, decided that coaching was what I – was passionate about. Okay. So let me back up. What did your folks do growing up? Uh, my dad was a foot doctor and a pastor. Really? A podiatrist and a pastor. Yep. Huh. Okay. I didn't know that. And my mom tried to keep me on the straight and narrow. Nice. Full time job. Which was the, the toughest job in right. the house. Full time job. Yep. No question. Okay. So uh, played at West Florida, started coaching at Pensacola Junior College, coached okay. a whole year, no paychecks. Been there, done that. Whole year. Yep. Everybody else was excited to come to the end of the month, and I'm like, it's just time for a new month. Just, time, just starting over with one. No question. <laughs> so that got me a graduate assistant spot at Delta State. Okay, so the hard work, not paying anything, got you yes. into one of the hardest industries in the world. Yes. And Good I was college coaching. fired up about that. Perfect. So you're in Mississippi Valley, moved from, from Delta State. Got a promotion. I did. I was and excited. So we went from a smaller school to a Division One school. Tell us about how it, what transpired there and what happened. Yeah, I, I I got on campus and I was the top assistant. Yeah, you were. Which was amazing. I was the only white guy anywhere yep. near. And I, I had a couple run-ins with getting some reimbursements and stuff. And I, I asked my coach. I said, I, Why do they not like me? Yeah. And he said, What do you mean? I said, Is it because I'm new? or a male, or white, or not from here? He said, probably yes. all of it. Yes, <laughs> yeah, all for of sure. It. So that took a little bit of navigating, but we started the season one and 11. Oof. That was tough. We made 800 grand in guarantee games. Wow. And then we won that's a lot. That's a lot. Now tell everybody what a guarantee game is. Guarantee game is where you go play, and you're probably not going to win, Right. and you make money. For sure. We made Been there and done that as a player and a coach. Yeah, no question. Yeah. And then we won 17 in a row and had the nation's longest winning streak. Wow. That's so incredible. we had some success. Yeah. I was not there for long. He got a job, and me and him went to Moorhead State in Kentucky. I was the only guy that he took from Valley, Ooh. which was amazing. Okay. So we're at Moorhead State now, which is the back to what Delta State looks like. For sure. And in the mountains of Kentucky, Two years before, they had just beat Louisville in the NCAA tournament. They had an NBA guy, Kenneth Fareed. And we proceeded to win the most games as our first year, our first two years, our first three years. Wow. I left, and then they had the best season that they've had since we were there with all the guys that we had there. So wow. we had a lot of success. We were, we were rising fast and very, very blessed. Some things have to happen right. Yeah, in college sports, there's so many things that have to happen. The main thing is players. Sure. I mean, everybody talks about how you know awesome Nick Saban is, but he's got the best players. He's got the best players in, in the in the world. No question. And so, uh, so you're at Moorhead. So we're we're from we're from there. Moorhead. Uh, it, it's funny that we're doing this today because today is the third year anniversary of my dad passing. Wow. So we had we were finishing up the season. It's March Madness right now. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I think we had just lost in the semifinals of the conference tournament to Murray State, who went to the NCAA tournament. Right. They had an NBA point guard then too. Gotcha. And I, I, I knew I was just a bad dad. I knew that, and it yeah. hit me when my dad passed. Okay, so you're you're more heading Kentucky. You and Courtney are married, and um, so how many kids do you have at this point? Three little girls. Three, three little girls. Okay. Oldest is five. Youngest is two. Okay. What year is that? What year is this? This is 2015. Okay. I, I might be I might be yeah, 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 for sure, around for sure. 15 or 16. Something. Okay, so doing really well. On it, honestly, in the college sports world, you're fast tracking. I mean, you get with a good guy, which is huge in college sports. No you can't question. be with a guy that's either super old or not going anywhere or is fixing to retire. So you get with a guy, and I was his moving, guy, and you were his guy, and that's huge in college sports. So you're moving, you get to Moorhead, and you guys are killing it and doing well. Got a good player that's helping you. Father dies. So what's? Yeah, it, it, I just there was there was one moment that I think back to my my oldest was five, I think, and she had a tough day at daycare. Okay. And a lot of people are like, oh, it's just stuff that kids are going through, but. Our tough days and their tough days to us and to them is the same thing. Right. If somebody makes fun of them, that's just as bad as us getting fired or yeah. in their world. For sure. She's crying. I get a call from a recruit's dad. I said, baby, hold on. I got to take this. Talk to the recruit's dad for two hours. I get the recruit eventually. Right. Um, I come back in. She's asleep. Hmm. Don't see her for two days. Wow. And I just, it, I look back and I realize I'm a terrible dad. And I, I was probably a better dad than, I don't, I don't know how to put a percentage of that. Well, 70% of here's the thing. Up. I'm a great golfer compared to a 10-year-old. But I'm an awful golfer compared to Tiger Woods. Yeah. And so it's, it's all about perspective and who you're comparing yourself to. But here's the thing. Your bar was high. Yes. And if you're below that bar as a competitor, you're below that bar, you want to raise that bar yeah. in every area of your life. And if you felt like you were not very, a very good dad, you had to figure, fix yeah. that. Luckily, my wife is amazing, and right. she, she carried a lot of that load. So it, it, I was looking for something, and I was talking to people, and I, 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 the one thing that I hated was my success or failure was tied to somebody. He goes out and does something stupid, it affects me. Yeah. And I, I, I knew that there was something better, so I went to work for a startup that dealt with international basketball players. Okay, so you're still in the sports world, but you decided, hey, it is time for me. I've got to make a move. i got to make a move. I, you know, and I'm not proud to say this. I was almost like a crackhead to recruiting. Yeah. I couldn't control it. If, if, if my phone rang at 11 o'clock at night, I was answering it. Right. No question. Yeah. I walked down, I'd be walking up and down the street with snow, tired as I'll get out, and in the office the next morning. That's just what I was. Phone, what I yeah. Could, couldn't help it. So competitive. So I went to this, I was like the VP, I, I was basically running a sales team, had to hire and run a sales team. And I had to travel internationally at this point. Oh, so now stuff. I'm going 30, 30, 40 days overseas. This is worse than Division One college no, basketball. Yeah, yeah. So um, I, I'll never forget this. I called one of my buddies that I grew up with who was my roommate at Enterprise. Okay. One of the one state championship yeah. together. Best friend in high school, the guy that I walked into the gym with when I saw Courtney. Oh, you met Courtney, okay. Same guy. Yeah. I called him and I said, hey, bro, I'm not going to Australia the next trip, whenever it was, two weeks from now. He goes, what's that mean? I said, I have no idea, but I'm not going. At this time, my wife was managing an enterprise rental car. Okay. She's working 70 hours a week. For sure. Those guys keep working. Time. Unbelievable. Yeah. So he goes, what's that mean? I said, I don't know what it means. He goes, uh, why don't you come work at Yellowhammer? I said, I don't have no idea what I would do at Yellowhammer. And he goes, just come build relationships. Where are you living? I'm in Elizabethtown, Kentucky, two hours from Moorhead. Okay, so two hours from Moorhead, working for this company that yep. we were traveling a bunch. Six months in. Six months in. And who's your, who's your buddy? That, who calls you? Cliff Sims. Cliff Sims. Okay, so Cliff calls and says something about Yellowhammer. Yeah, which I had kept track of because he was my best because friend. Of, because of Cliff. Okay. But I had no idea what I would do there. I, don't, I, I can't write. Okay. Lord knows. Right. I mean, you both. <laughs> I, was, I was a JUCO guy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> They're in JUCO for a reason. No question. Yeah. And uh, I don't keep up with politics. At right. All. Probably vote a certain way because of the way you're right. Right. The, not many of us in the sports world keep up with politics simply because it's too much. I mean, it's hard to watch ESPN and watch CNN. 
no Fox question. Sports or whatever, or Fox or whatever. No question. Okay. So uh, I said, why don't you send me something over? He sends it over, and it was almost identical to what I was making, but with a much higher upside. Okay. I talked to my wife. I didn't even get the sentence out. I said, do you want to move to a And she said, yes. Absolutely. We were not dialed in spiritually at that point in our lives. Okay. Tough, tough deal. She was busy. I was busy. Um, we were at each other's necks, two competitive people. Right. Uh, some tough times in Elizabethtown. And so I, I said, do you want to move to, and she, she, I don't even think she heard where I, where I said, yeah. So we moved to Birmingham. I'm doing business development, which is basically sales. Yeah. Okay. So I'm, I, I don't know anybody. For Yellowham. For Yellowham. Come okay. down here. Four months in, my buddy calls me and he goes, hey, I'm going to work for Trump's campaign. You think you can hold it down for two months? Hold it down means? Take care of things while I'm gone. Okay, so you're so Cliff kind of borderline hires you as his right hand man, but also to do some development stuff. So as he hires you as his right hand man, you're kind of seeing the inner workings of the business. So sure. only after four months, so you're so let so twelve months ago, you're recruiting and coaching college basketball. Oh yeah, yeah. And then so now you're building relationships and quasi sales guy for Yellowhammer. Yeah. And give us give me the fifteen second version of what Yellowhammer is. It's it's a uh, news. Media outlet. Okay. We have a website that did 28 million clicks last year. Okay. Uh, we have a radio news network that's on 35 different stations in the state of Alabama. Does top and bottom hour news. We do events. We have a TV show. We do podcasts. Gotcha. Just uh, everything Alabama under one roof. Okay. Perfect. Yep. So Cliff says I'm going to work for President or Donald Trump on the campaign. On the campaign. It's only two months left in the campaign. Oh wow. Okay. So he, he goes down. down. So he goes and says, hey, take over. I said, you know what? I can hold it down if you'll answer the phone. Absolutely. So he answered the phone and I held it down. Okay. Trump gets elected. Okay. Hey, bud, I'm going to go work on this transition team. Can you hold it down for two months? Absolutely. Worked well last time. We'll figure it out. Four months in. Inauguration day, he sells the company. Wow. Got a new owner. That's January of 17. Okay. And... God was faithful. At this point, we're dialed in. Relationships better than right. it's ever been, and certainly not perfect, but but way better than than what it had ever been before. And I, the new owner kept me, wow. which is rare. I thought he was going to bring so. one of his guys in. Yeah, for sure. And we had a great year. But in September of that year, he sold the company. So now I'm on the third owner. Uh, and they were gracious enough and had seen enough that they kept me around, and I'm thankful for that opportunity. And we've been rocking and rolling ever since. We had the best year we had in 17, and we've had a better year in 18. Which is, here's the thing, that in business, because I, I had a buddy, one of my best friends in the world, who was a farmer rep or, in a, or a sales guy, and he was with four different companies in the span of like, 19 months mm -hmm. because the company sold they got rid of people and all that stuff so it's really really kind of crazy that you stayed in you got to stay in i think that's a testament to what you to who you are uh so it's testament me, to grace absolutely <laughs> so let me ask you this so i know the world you came from a lot of people don't know the world you came from how did coaching college basketball prepare you for business because you are in you are in the throes of business because as the ceo of yellowhammer you're borderline a business owner, even though you're, you're, you don't own the company, you're running the thing, and your income is based off of production and all the things that come to the business. How did college basketball, coaching college sports, prepare you to do that? Because you're on paper, bro, you are as unprepared as anybody to run a multi million dollar I was company. so unprepared. Right. I'll tell you how unprepared I was. When Cliff was working for Trump's campaign, I texted him. Uh -huh. And I said, hey, man, just got a deal done for us. Really excited about it. He goes, cool, who's it with? I said, with some, with some PAC, yeah. P-A-C-T. I didn't know that a PAC, P-A-C, Political Action Committee, was not called a PAC. I thought they were making a PAC to elect somebody. Uh, and he goes, one, that's straight. Yeah. Congratulations on the deal. That's going to be good for us. Yeah. But two, it's a PAC, not mm -hmm. a PAC. Nice. Added a T on there. Three, who did I leave to run my company? Yeah. My old <laughs> that's so don't worry, we got the deal done. The message. <laughs> that needs to be screenshotted and put in your house somewhere. So, uh, so unprepared, but in college athletics, 
which college taught me, you just have to figure things out. If there's a problem, here's how we're going to address it. Right. Here's how we're going to fix it. If that doesn't work, then we're going to do this. And it's, it's, it's about figuring out problems. And it's very eerily similar from what I was doing to what I'm doing now. And I don't know how your journey right. has been. Yeah. But it's, I'm not recruiting kids um, from the toughest neighborhoods in the country anymore. Right. I'm dealing with, you know, people that are, are very well off and are doing good right, for themselves. For sure. But at the same time, I'm trying to help other people. Okay. So when I was recruiting, I was trying to provide an opportunity for a kid to change his life. Right. Now I'm trying to provide an opportunity for a business owner to change their life, for one of my employees to change his life. Right. Um, so I think it all goes back to just serving people and figuring out problems. Absolutely. So I think serving people is the biggest thing is because you know, the old saying, if you help enough people get what they want, you have as much as you want. And I think the fact that you could transition from recruiting a kid out of the, you know, the, the inner city of Houston sure. to come to the Delta of Mississippi, that now you're recruiting people that have multiple, multiple million dollar bank accounts sure. to do business with you guys. I think that's, I think that's amazing. So transition out of college, I think that one thing that you pointed out that I think is huge is what we try to teach our kids and my wife and I try to stress is problem solving. Mm -hmm. Jackie always said, Jackie got on me the other day, she said, I said, we got, we got something going on, how can I figure this out? She said, don't, don't become the problems unless you got a solution. Solving, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Solving problems is not unique. It is something in every business or every every entity in the world, whether it be coaching college sports, in a church, sure. uh, in their, on your own business, running your own business. In a marriage. Mar uh, very good, yeah. Parenting. Absolutely. Any kind of relation. I mean, so I think, and, and I'm going down a rabbit hole right now, but what you said to me, we were at dinner the other night at a very nice mm -hmm. restaurant. Yeah. Appreciate you, yeah. the time there. Um, you, you were talking to somebody and you said, all diets work. For sure. Yeah, they and do. I'm like, well, some have to work better than others. Like one is probably 10% or 8% or 7% yeah. better. But you made the point, and I will, I will never forget this for the rest of my life. It's because people are moving and dialed in and trying, actively trying to work to get to something. So if right. it's drink more water for the keto diet just because you're drinking more water. So I think problem solving is not sitting around talking forever about what we're going to do or how we're going to fix this. We figure something out pretty quick, right. and we move. Yes. We go. Yeah. We, it's not going to be perfect, but we're going to go. And when you get down a road, you might say, this ain't the right road. Right. So either you make a U-turn and you go the other way, you take a right or a left. And that's what I think people don't understand about problem solving. You know, a lot of people just want to have meetings all day. For sure. To solve the problems. Yeah. That ain't going to solve problems. Yeah. you got to take action. you got to take action. We had a... We had a, I had a for some more used to work for me, and then like the stars had to be aligned, the pencils had to be sharpened, the notebook had to be right, the temperature, temperature paper, <laughs> all these different things for them to take action. I was just like, you know, you just gotta go. And here's the thing: as long as you're on the front of, you're gonna screw it up in some way. No question. It's totally fine. But what you figured out is that's not the proper way to do whatever it is you're doing. Right. So you gotta take action. So all right, I've got five questions for you. Now these five questions, these the, the super fast. Five questions that I just want you to answer. Some of them may be a little longer, but I don't want to give me the answers. So okay. Question number one, what does your morning routine look like? I wake up about the same time every day. And that is? Uh, around 6.30. Okay. And I go get a gel packet of protein okay. instantly, right out the gate. Wake up. Before I go to Gel protein. Gel protein. We'll talk about that later. Field. Okay. Is that not good? Ah, go ahead. Okay. So I take that. <laughs> go to the restroom, brush my teeth, um, then I try to get into the Word first. Okay. Sometimes I get distracted by Instagram, email, text. I, okay. I try to get in the Word. Yeah, for sure. Um, I do have a little streak going in there my Bible app, so I'm happy about that. Uh, and then I will get into my morning. I normally uh, read or do something to make myself better before I start work every sure. morning. Okay. What does a day of eating look like? So, um, unless I have a breakfast meeting, which I try to not have breakfast meetings as much as possible, I eat breakfast super clean. Okay. So right out the gate, I'm 33% of my meals are clean. What? It, what? It, give, give me a 
So I, I take the protein in the morning, then there's something called Huel. They're not a sponsor of this podcast. Nice. They probably should pay us. <laughs> but it's like grains and legumes, it's powder. Okay. I mix that into a smoothie. Perfect. So that's what I have for breakfast every morning, so super clean. All right. Um, lunch, I always have lunch meetings every day, so it Love depends it. on where I go. I try and doing business with somebody. No question. Okay. I don't like. I don't eat by myself. Ever, never. Good. Except for breakfast, right? Which is a smoothie, right? And then um, a lot of the times I do meal fit. Yeah. Uh, dinner, about probably half the times I have dinner meetings at night. For sure. So most of the time, lunch and dinner out, just because of. Yeah, it's business. Yeah. yeah. All right. What's your breakfast? Super clean. What's your favorite book of all time? Um, Don't say the Bible. I mean, do you have you have to kind of yep. say the Bible? Yeah. I think Andy Andrews is a very good friend, and he wrote some the the. Uh, let me think about that before I put Andy on it. Oh, there's so many. I, I'm gonna say the little things, Andy Andrew, Andy Andrews. Here's what's great. The noticers great. The travelers get all. Uh, this guy's a stud. So anything that he Listen. writes, I love. But I think it's it's the the traveler's gift is a good one. I'm gonna have to go with the traveler's gift. So, okay. So everybody needs to know this was totally unprompted. You had no idea this question was being asked, and I doubt that you've seen the video that I did however long ago about my favorite, number one favorite book for me is Traveler's Gift. Hands down, yeah. documented. Look it up, Traveler's Gift. Andy That's Andrews good. is a stud. He's yeah. wonderful. Um, what are you reading right now? Um, I'm re I'm rereading the Forty Eight Laws of Power. Okay. Um, I'm listening to David Goggins' audio book. Nice. You can't hurt me. A lot, lot of a lot of language in that book. A lot of language. A lot of language. Gotcha. He's but he's, strong though. He's a he's a warrior. He's warrior. He's he's good. When when, when guys are trained to be warriors, I'm sure it's hard to <laughs> untrain them. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but but that's so I'm 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 physically reading Forty Eight Laws of Power okay. and I'm listening to Goggins' audio book. How old are you right now? Thirty seven. Thirty seven. If you could go back and tell your 20-year-old self something, what would you tell him? I would tell him to enjoy the journey more. And I think I've done a good job of that the past couple of years. Certainly not perfect. But when I was at Pensacola Junior College not getting paid, I was so excited to get to the next chapter that I didn't enjoy what happened at Pensacola. When I was at Delta State, my AD is now the AD at Troy, and we were talking the other day, and we were like, you remember the days at Delta State when right. we thought we were busy? Yeah. But we could sit there and hang out every night. Okay. Um, but I was so ready to get to the next thing that I yeah. didn't enjoy where I was at. And I, I think that you always try and get to the next level because we're competitive and we're trying to level up and we're trying to create opportunities for our family. But if you don't enjoy where you're at, at some point in life you're going to look back and say, what is all this worth? Because sure. I was just trying to get to the next chapter. It would be like reading a book and just skimming because you want to get to the next chapter so bad instead of soaking up where you're at and what's going on. Perfect. Awesome. Hey, appreciate you so much, my man. Thank you hey, for having me. Uh, BJ is a, an amazing uh, man of God, wonderful family man, and also a really, really good businessman that transitioned from the college uh, basketball uh, lifestyle. So... Hey, thank you so much for watching with us and listening to us. We've had a wonderful time, wonderful conversation here today. Any questions at all, please email us, info at milfit.co. If you have a guest that you'd like for us to see and talk to and you'd like to know more about, uh, please let us know, info at milfit.co. Thank you so much, guys.